Hello everyone, welcome. You're watching Voices, and this is a program of the Communications Department of the Atlantic Caribbean Union Mission of Seventh-day Adventists. We're very delighted that you've joined us, and we trust that you'll have a great time watching our program today. We are emphasizing home and family, and I'm delighted to bid welcome to the show Pastor and Sister Kenny and Dalian DeVoe, and then Sister Patrice Clark. Hi guys, welcome. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you. It's a joy to have you with us. I trust that our sharing together would be beneficial to all of those who are watching the program. And uh, we want to begin just by asking you all to introduce yourselves to us, please. Is it okay if I begin with you, sir, on that side? Delighted. My name is Kenny DeVoe. Mm -hmm. I'm married to this beautiful lady here for 32 years. I am a pastor of the Bethany Center Adventist Church, and uh, we are uh, the parents of two adult children. Okay, good. Darlene, it's just a joy. Can I just hear you say something, please? Yes, my <laughs> name is Darlene DeVoe, and I am wife of Kenny. Mm -hmm. And as he said, we have two adult children, Kenny and Kenny Jr. and Danielle. And All right. that's, it. that's okay. And Patrice? Yes, my name is Patrice Clark, wife of Eric Clark. I am a registered midwife, nursing officer at the Fleming Street Clinic, and we have three adult children, Duran, Dania, and Denisha. Well, welcome. Welcome to all of you. Thank I you. noticed that um, Dalian said that you have a son named uh, after yourself, and Patrice didn't want to have another saint <laughs> named after. Yes, I can understand so. why. Uh, it's not good to have too many saints in the family. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> My heart was hurt for a little while, but we, we've gotten over it, yes, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, can I ask, you said you've been married for 30? 30 32 years. 32 yeah. years? Yes. How has it been going? 32 years is a long time. It's been a long time. It's mm -hmm. been good. It's been a work in progress, mm -hmm. but with Christ as the center of our lives, because we made that commitment all those years back, mm -hmm. you know, we decided to have God lead us, and here we are okay. today. For me, it's been a very beautiful experience. I just enjoy uh, being married to this lovely lady here, <laughs> and um, I wouldn't have it any different. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff, man. And Patrice, what about you? I know you've got a different story. Well, like she said, it's a work in progress. Sometimes you have your highs and lows, but yeah. for the most part, it's, it's been enjoyable. We've been married now going on 31 years, and God, with God as the center and God leading, um, everything is possible. Okay. Thank you. I go back to Kenny and Dalian, and it's okay if I call sure, you Kenny and Dalian. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, you guys met, how long have you known each other? Uh, all our lives. Yes, we actually attended the same church. We grew up wow. attending the same school, okay. and we went to college together, but mm -hmm. his circle of friends was a little bit older than my circle of friends, mm -hmm. and so we didn't really connect socially until after college, mm -hmm. and an opportunity arose where that happened, and after that we continued to court, and here we are, 32 years later, it was in marriage. I think it put it just a little bit uh, older. Uh -huh. uh, she made a bit, you know, <laughs> Eastern West. No, he yeah. did not rob the cradle. He did not rob the cradle. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Okay. So it wasn't love at first sight? Uh, not, no. Not, no. Uh, we, like you said, grew up in the same church. And matter of fact, um, I knew her in church, but uh, we, we didn't have um, anything going. I think that, like you said, it wasn't until after college, even knowing her in college, uh, when we came home, and then I think uh, when um, she started looking for a husband, uh, uh, she talked me down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Dali. No, I was going to say that that first date, you know, mm -hmm. it got, we had to have so many other dates after that, and mm -hmm. so we grew on each other, uh -huh. and that's where it all started. Okay. So, Patrice, tell me your story. When did you first lay eyes on me and decided that you, you wanted to have that, that gem? <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I didn't know you um, at the beginning. We met officially when you did your internship at my home church, Sanibel. Mm -hmm. And that was 
in, I would say, 1983, when we, when we officially met. And I would say that I wasn't interested in you initially because my thing was that I would never marry a pastor and I would never marry a doctor. Mm. Mm. And that was because I found those two careers and um, occupations to be very occupied and busy. Mm. And so I thought that would really take away from me having my spouse there with me at all times because they were always on call. Yeah. Mm. And so it was that after you started asking questions, making phone calls, <laughs> then it was that we actually got something going. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to hear your part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> my story is so simple. <laughs> I was minding my own business. Yes. <laughs> I was preaching yes. at the Sandoval Church, okay. and she volunteered to do the special item of music. Mm -hmm. And the song that she sang was, his eye is on the sparrow. Okay. Okay. I later learned that she was talking about moi. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what the sparrow. That's right. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I, I found out afterwards. But it was really, really exciting um, to, to just meet um, Patrice. And like you, when I saw her, I, I thought this could work. Right. And there were other interests. And I think that young people must be able to make choices. Absolutely. If mm -hmm. you're not making choices, if you don't have, you know, the options and stuff while you're young, then it can affect you, I guess, a little yeah. bit later right. on. Yeah. I think that's a very good point, uh, particularly for our young people out there. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with uh, going out mm -hmm. uh, with different um, mm -hmm. ladies or men. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you were just doing your uh, initial investigation, you want to know uh, how they behave in certain situations, right. That's fine, mm -hmm. but when we when we reach the point of being very serious, mm -hmm. then I think that uh, we need to decide uh, what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, pray about it. Right. Uh, make sure pray about it uh, uh, two and three times. Yes. I guess, and uh, the Lord, I'm sure, mm -hmm. He's promised us that He will lead us right. and into what we should do, mm -hmm. in uh, particularly in choosing a mate. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying the those periods that we call the generalization. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then specialization. Right. And you shouldn't specialize before you generalize. You generalize. That's right. Okay, that, that's, that's good. I like that. Uh, what else would you say to young people who are planning, who are looking for a, a future mate? What are some of the advice can you give them? I mentioned, I hear you say something about praying. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I think that uh, when we begin to aspire to have a, a mate, a serious companion, we ought to make sure that we present it to the Lord. Okay. Uh, because the Lord, uh, he wants the very best for us, and if we ask him, uh, he will certainly lead us uh, where we ought to go. Uh, then you want to make sure that the person possesses certain qualities uh, that you find uh, necessary in a marriage. Okay. Uh, a lot of times we look, like to look at the, um, you know, prettiness mm -hmm. and, yeah. and the shapiness and so forth. While all those things are, are good, uh, I don't think they're going to they're gonna last uh, forever. Okay. And so you want those qualities that last forever. Uh, is this person, uh, you know, loving God? Is this person a, a, a provider? How do they speak to their uh, family members right. and uh, so forth? You want to know uh, if they are ambitious mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any <coughs> others that you would like to Yes, add? I think you should, first of all, develop that personal relationship with God yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you wow. need to test the relationship that your spouse to be has with Christ, and you can do that by looking at their, their overall total lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because you can tell by their lifestyle whether or not they have that personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And then when you're also looking for that person, you want to ensure that you court that person to the point where you know so much about them, that um, you know which, whether or not you share the same interest, mm -hmm. because that's important as yes. you, when you get married, um, at, and when you begin to have that empty nest kind of thing mm -hmm. and you're looking for things to do, mm -hmm. you want to know that, hey, he loves to probably watch sports okay. the same way that I do, mm -hmm. or he likes to garden or mm -hmm. whatever, you know. Interesting. Patrice, you want to add to it, please? Like how Darlene says, 
the interests is important and even backgrounds because sometimes mm -hmm. if you come from different home backgrounds that are totally different sometimes just adjusting and getting together may be difficult so you could be unequally yoked in areas like culture even home background education and so it is important that you um, are like she said um, um, compatible compatible that is mm -hmm. and you appreciate and you like the same things mm -hmm. and and you can actually um, what would I say um, you like gardening like she said mm -hmm. or when you have when when the kids are gone you can relate to certain things because it isn't about the kids anymore mm -hmm. and, 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 and there's nothing else to talk about. It's just you too. And right. you don't want it to be boring. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> want to have a happy life. <laughs> yeah. Now I've heard a statement mm -hmm. and I want to just ask your, your input in it. Marriage is not so much finding the right person as being that's the right. right person. What do you get from that? I think that's very significant. Uh, if we want someone that's outstanding, mm -hmm. then we should also be outstanding. Uh, I think that we ought to, if we want a Christian, we should first be a Christian mm -hmm. uh, because we want to give the person the same thing we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what Darlene meant when he says that when we caught that, that you know basically all about this individual. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, but first we must be that which we want. Okay. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and Darlene mentioned also, Darlene, um, that you ought to test them. Are you serious mm -hmm. about that? You should put these individuals through a test? You don't, not, not, not really a test per se, but mm -hmm. just watch them. Right. Watch how they relate to their family members. Right. Watch how they relate to their church. Mm -hmm. you know, if they mm -hmm. probably want to have Bible studies with you, right. let them initiate that. Mm -hmm. If they want to pray together with you, let them initiate that mm -hmm. and see how they mm -hmm. you know, relate to okay. a lifestyle, a spiritual lifestyle. And I'm agreeing with you with regards to the test. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in, in the courting period, a lot of times people wear masks. And yeah. so it is that they put their best foot forward and so you don't see things. And so that's why it's important not to rush into things too. Mm -hmm. Because the shorter period, people are able to hide yeah. certain qualities yeah. and characters that they may have mm -hmm. on a longer period of courtship and dating mm -hmm. then you're able to see what this person is actually like okay. mm -hmm. instead of just rushing into things mm -hmm. whether they have a temper whether they fly off to handle with certain things mm -hmm. you know okay. that's, that's very good. important because you know the, the way someone behaves uh, with you in certain circumstances will be the same way they behave with you in marriage uh, so the test, the testing, or whatever we want to we want to call it, the the observing, mm -hmm. we, we need to make sure that we are very uh, critical mm -hmm. about that. And uh, when we see certain red flags, we ought to not just put them put them aside, aside but mm -hmm. we ought to see them as very serious. Mm -hmm. And even if it means that we ought to back away from this individual, mm -hmm. we must do that. Okay. Uh, we do it in love. Mm -hmm. uh, we do it um, with care. Mm -hmm. uh, let them know that uh, well, you know, th th this is not going to work. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't feel comfortable. And so, uh, you know, I bless you. Uh, uh, you know, go in peace. <laughs> go in peace. And, uh, you know, we pray that God will lead us to the, the right one. Because okay. sometimes you think that you can go into marriage and you can change this, this person. Right. Mm -hmm. But it never happens. Wow. And you're going to be waiting for that change mm -hmm. until forever. But mm -hmm. that's who that person really is. Right. Only God can change them. So you have to be very careful before you go into a marriage, and this is the person who you really want to marry. Mm -hmm. This is exciting. We're going to come back in just a moment. When we come back, we're going to talk about the green-eyed monster. Okay. We're going to talk about what you would look for in your, what you want uh, the type of person your children to marry and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So hang on right there. Mm -hmm. Don't touch the dial. We'll be right back. You're watching Voices. <laughs> I'm Cynthia Wells, a participant of the 2015 Eight Weeks to Wellness program. I joined so that I could lose 10 pounds and lower all of the essential numbers for good health. And I met my goal. I wish to thank the Adventist healthcare professionals and the entire team for their efforts in helping me to meet this goal. They gave us nutritional tips, spiritual tips, 
mental, physical, and social tips. They helped us to develop relationships that could see us through these challenges. I think that this is the best program around that can help us change our lifestyles here in the Bahamas and become all healthy persons. I encourage everyone to make the effort to join the program and to take the challenge to eat smaller meals, to drink eight to 10 glasses of water a day, to take eight hours sleep per night, eat your vegetables and your fruits, take the challenge, and by the grace of God, you will not walk alone because eight weeks to wellness will go with you. Welcome back. You're watching Voices. This is a program of the Communications Department of the Atlantic Caribbean Union. And when we left off, we were a little spaced, but now you note that Patrice and I are a little closer together. Kenny and Darlene are a little closer together also. And uh, we want to begin this way. Ellen White says that if you're looking for that special friend, that mate, uh, that husband or that wife, that you ought to double, you ought to triple your prayer life. Can you give me a reason or two why? because marriage is a lifetime commitment. And so of course you have to pray to the good Lord to help you to find that right mate. Okay. Yeah, I think she's, she's saying, uh, just like said, that marriage is very serious. It is something that we cannot handle on our own. Mm -hmm. And we need the uh, input of the Holy Spirit, of the Godhead, if we mm -hmm. can say so, uh, to help us to make the right choice. And that choice is sometimes very difficult. We cannot lean, like the Bible says, on our own understanding. All right. uh, we have to lean on Him, and He will direct us. And I think that's why we need to triple or double our prayer life uh, to make sure that we are in commune with God. Okay. You know, sometimes people talk about you need tall, dark, and handsome. Mm. <laughs> I've heard the comment that lighten your coffee. Mm. <laughs> I've been told that. But, you know, sometimes when you're looking at stuff, uh, the externals, and I talk about people hiding their flaws or their bad nature, if you pray to God, He will show you That's those right. things. Mm -hmm. And so if you pray, like I said, twice a day, you need to double that prayer, like four times a day, mm -hmm. six mm -hmm. times a day, so that the Lord would actually show you these things, give you the spirit of discernment, discernment. Ah, right. so yeah. that you can be able to see through mm -hmm. this angel <laughs> <laughs> or this angel mm. in, in disguise. Okay. <laughs> now, now that, that reminds me that our theme for the Quinquennium, okay. which would be called Lord Transform Me, the LTM. Yes. How do you see that falling into place in terms of relationships? I think we need to understand that uh, we have not arrived, we're not perfect, and uh, we want to be the very best for our spouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're asking the Lord to change us, and not only change us from the, necessarily on the outside, but from the inside out, uh, so that those good qualities that uh, we want to be for our spouses can come out. And the only person that can do that is the Lord. Okay. And so you have to depend on Him daily to transform us into the person uh, that we, we would want to be for our spouse. Okay. okay. Patrice and Darlene, if your marriage suffers, all else is affected. True statement? Yes, it is. Yes, I think so. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it, it, it impacts your children because if you, you're not getting along, the children, they, they're able to tell. The children, if they don't see you kissing one another, hugging one another, you're always arguing. They become agitated. They don't do well in school. Um, the church, your relationship with the Lord even comes to low because you're discouraged. You, all of that. When you go to work, you're snapping at your colleagues mm -hmm. and everybody else. Mm -hmm. So everything suffers. Okay, Dalian. I agree with Patrice, everything. <laughs> but she said it all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but well, these, these ladies want to be uh, so nice, but, uh, and when we say everything, we mean every single thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure they got the message. 
Yes, it does. <laughs> yes. That too. <laughs> yes. If, if there's peace in the home, mm. we can face the world. Absolutely. Yes. We can right. cope with, we can deal, we can survive anything. That's right. If the marriage is intact. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. You, you, you need this uh, oasis. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're having a rough time outside, um, you know, when you, when you just let it run off your back, I know I'm going to a place mm -hmm. where I'm going to find somebody that loves me for me. Okay. And I don't have to pretend. I don't have to put on. I know that uh, Darlene is going to uh, soothe me. Uh, she'll tell me when I'm wrong, and uh, she'll build me up. Okay. And so, yes, uh, we, we, we need the marriage to be peaceful, and so we can face the world. Okay. Yeah. There, there's this passage in Ephesians 5 that folk always throw out there, huh. and it talks about the men, Kenny, yes. saying, you know, don't forget now the Bible says husbands or wives that's must submit it, that's right. to the man, to yes. the husbands. Right. Um, uh, uh, do you ladies agree with that? I just want a one word. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what, what is that saying? And I, and I think that that is true. Wives mm -hmm. ought to submit to uh, their husbands. Mm -hmm. But the other part of the text, I think uh, verse 25, mm -hmm. talks about husbands uh, loving their wives mm -hmm. as Christ loved the church. Okay. And I think if both of us mm -hmm. uh, get the true impact of that, we we'll have a beautiful relationship. Uh, we are not just to want to have submission from my spouse, mm -hmm. uh, but I must love my spouse okay. like how Christ loved the church. And that means that I must uh, not look at her other flaws or faults. I must see her as Christ sees her. Okay. And uh, if she makes a mistake, uh, who doesn't make a mistake? Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't allow that mistake to become a mountain. Okay. You know, I see her uh, with, the, with the loving eyes mm -hmm. that Christ has. Okay. So it makes it easier for us to submit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. And I, okay. I wanted to come back to transform me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And transform me if both of us take that commitment to Lord transform me, Lord transform me, yeah. then we will be giving a hundred percent instead of each person giving fifty, which people tend to say sometimes mm -hmm. everybody giving their 50 percent but mm -hmm. everybody should be giving a hundred percent and that would make your relationship the, that much better okay and okay. that's important Pastor Clark, yes. because you know i should i should not have mm -hmm. anything left to share with anybody else Beautiful. right a hundred percent i'm giving to my spouse mm -hmm. she's giving hundred to me mm -hmm. and i have nothing else mm -hmm. to give to anybody out there okay yeah and you, and you bring in what we call emotional Adultery. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that persons do not commit adultery physically, right? But they've they've given so much of themselves yes. to mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. that when they come to their spouse, they have nothing mm -hmm. left that's, to give. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that if we were to give the hundred at the beginning, mm -hmm. right, then we would not have anything else that's for right. mm -hmm. for yeah. other person. And, and you know, when these guys or girls come with their tricks, mm -hmm. right? Say, nah, uh, don't worry about that. I'm taking care of at home. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't need that. I am, I am filled. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, I remember a gentleman, and uh, he often said, you should never try to figure out your spouse. He says you try to figure them in. Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, I, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it means that uh, we ought to... We ought to involve our spouses in all of our affairs because and that, that's very important. Because a lot of times we find ourselves, uh, you know, trying to figure them out. What, I wonder what she's gonna say uh, if I do that. Well, I don't do that. Uh, bring her in, mm -hmm. and uh, let's see what she do. Okay. Because she will make sure guide this whole situation in the way it should be. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have another another view. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we figure them in. Uh, that's what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with that too because sometimes the husband may not think about a certain thing in a certain way and the wife sees it from a different angle. Yeah. And when God actually made it for the two to come together to make one complete person, yes. a complete whole. So when she brings her aspect to it and mm -hmm. the male brings his aspect, it makes one complete total picture yeah. that one may not have seen on their own. It is a marriage after all, so we yes. are supposed to marry everything together, mm -hmm. both yes. of us. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that, that's, that's deep and I, I really yeah. love that. I see where we complement each other. Right. Yeah, right. exactly. We're supposed right. to complement each other. You know, Pastor Clark, you know, and uh, we don't like to admit this, mm -hmm. but uh, while they say that uh, wives are the bigger vessel, I don't agree with that. Um, you know, I think they are the smarter vessels. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. have this gift. Um, and, and we don't like to admit it, mm -hmm. but it's true. Right. You know, when I when I 
uh, allow uh, Dalian to do and, and say certain things, uh, then I see I see exactly uh, what you mean, and uh, I didn't I didn't quite see it that way, you know. And I think it is good uh, when we when we uh, have that uh, addition, additional uh, view uh, viewpoint uh, on a particular subject. What I like, one of my favorite pastimes, for lack of a better word, okay. is to stand away and hear Patrice talking to her friends, and she's able to say to them what Danny says. Yes, <laughs> that's right. And what Danny thinks about this right. or that. And I just want to give that out there. And that, um, that, that's very important yeah. for, for mm -hmm. wives out there to understand, and husbands too, mm -hmm. that we ought, to, we ought to big up our spouses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We ought to, and I'm talking about to our friends, to, to everyone. You know, we have mm -hmm. the tendency of putting our spouses down, mm -hmm. but uh, we want to build them up. That's right. You know, and uh, let let our 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 friends know that I'm depending uh, on my wife, uh, my husband, and 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 this is what uh, he would do in this situation, and uh, and, and this is what uh, he would do in that situation. Okay. And, and and you know, when I, when we hear that, uh, it makes us love them more. Uh, so ladies, do it more often. <laughs> Where do you respond? But the the thing too is right. It it gives if mm -hmm. if you do that, mm -hmm. anybody who had any intentions yes, out there, right. yes. they would know. Well, boy, you know they they have it she going on, right. you yeah. know, in their home. Mm -hmm. They don't need and they're not looking for anybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I can I shift a little bit sure. because as we advance the program and we could really spend days That's just right. talking, yes. right? There's a crime problem mm. in most countries, yes. and our country is no different. Yes. Would you say that there's a connection between discipline, between parenting, um, child rearing, and the crime? Yes, okay. yes. I think it's a direct uh, correlation. Mm -hmm. I think uh, when we when we have uh, children in the home, uh, we we it's our responsibility as parents mm -hmm. to train our children how to behave. When they go outside, uh, we teach them that uh, you don't move other people's stuff. Right. Uh, it's not your own. And I think that uh, God has given us our children to to mentor, to train, to to be able to uh, behave themselves or or uh, you know just just deal with certain situations that they will face out there. And I think that starts in the home. A lot of times we say that uh, we leave it to the church, leave it to the school, but it starts, in my view, first of all, in the home. Yeah. The hand that rocks the cradle hmm. rules the world. Mm -hmm. Ladies, is it true? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, what is that saying to you? What was the role of the, the women, the mothers in Israel? I, I think the mothers play, they, they wear so many hats in a home. Mm -hmm. For example, when you look at a, the husband, he may, what it seems to be, have to be having a nine to five job. The proverb that says, um, a man's may work from sun to sun. Yes, and a woman's, woman's work, work is never, never done. done. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, she wears so many hats. She has to be the nurse, the teacher. She has to be the, the maid, mm -hmm. the taxi driver, <laughs> everything. And so she has her hand in everything. Mm -hmm. And because she's so closely knit with, with, her, knitted with her children, she sort of, you know, rules. She has a hand in there in ruling that world. Mm -hmm. right. And and the mother spends more time, I would say, with with that child, mm -hmm. because from them being a baby, it mm -hmm. starts from there. She spends more time when when. Um, the daddy could go to sleep and they have to breastfeed. Mm -hmm. They they can't share in that or they think they can't share in that. The mother starts with breastfeeding and then she spends the time, uh, like Darlene said, nursing. She helps with the schoolwork, what most fathers think they don't have the patience for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, you know, all of that is in the training. And so the mother has a big responsibility, not not cursing at them you know because you're actually teaching them to do that so whatever they see in the home that becomes their norm right. can i ask mm -hmm. you then and i appreciate what all of you have said in just a few seconds if you had to give a lesson that you think is so important to your children that you want to just pass on to them that legacy that heritage what would you say i think uh, i would want my children to develop a deep 
personal relationship with God. I think that God will provide them with all of the answers that they, they need. I don't care what situation they find themselves, if they have that connection with God and, uh, and, and, and trust Him, lean on Him, I think that He will direct their path. And that is the, the most important lesson I think that I want to leave as a legacy for my children. Mm -hmm. I think that that covers it for all of us in, mm -hmm. a, yes, in a way, right? Yes, Let me just does. ask those who haven't spoken, if you had to do it all over again, would you do it? Would you do it? Yes, I would. Yes. You would? Yeah. Should you would? Yes, I would. Beyond the shadow of a doubt? <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, would you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to say thank you all. It's just been a real pleasure. The it's time has already expired on wow. us, but you're watching Voices, and this is uh, my friends, Kenny and Darlene and Patrice, and we've been friends for quite a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we thank God for the friendship, Absolutely. and we pray that it never ends until we get the glory. Amen. All right? You've been watching Voices. I'm Eric D. Clark, and it's a joy to have you with us. We look forward to you joining us next week. And please, we thank God for his blessings. Keep home and family uppermost, because as the home and family goes, so goes the church. Yeah. And we're preparing to have a little heaven right here on earth. Until next time. God bless you.